Hi, this is Stephen Rosell, Senior Technical Specialist at Autodesk, and I'm going to cover all of the new UV editing updates in Maya 2016 Extension 2. So we'll start with a head that already has some UV coordinates on it. Let's just frame in on that, and we'll turn on our shell shading so you can see these. And what you'll see is that I've got a symmetrical head, but my UVs are asymmetrical. So I've taken the time to kind of massage and clean up one side. Now I want to transfer that to the other. So we have a new symmetrize UVs tool, which basically requires that you define a center point for the axis. And then you uh, it does require that you have topological symmetry. Uh, once you do that, then you can basically symmetrize along any point in the UV editor and use your middle mouse button with control to drag that line around. Now I can basically go in and just start to paint essentially on one side of my shell and assuming I do have symmetry I can mirror that over to the other side of the shell and now I have a perfect match. Now you can go in either direction so you can see here for the neck shell I actually want to reverse that and I want to have this go from right to left instead of left to right. So we're going to shift gears from the head for a minute and we're going to bring up uh, this object here, which is actually made up of a couple of different pieces. This is an old wagon wheel. And if you take a look in the UV editor, what you can see is I've got some UVs that are laid out, but in a very crude way, and I need to pack these more tightly and efficiently. So we have a completely new layout algorithm. Uh, so the layout UVs tool has a legacy option, but you probably won't need it because the new one is far superior. I'm going to start from scratch just by using the default options. And the first thing you'll notice is that just with the default options, it does a really nice job of packing. And if you look, because of the shape of this wagon wheel, I've got these cylindrical areas, and it does a really smart job of actually filling in those holes where the old layout tool would not consider those at all. Now I can take this a step further and I can actually do things like prescaling where I can say align things horizontally as best you can. It'll go in and it'll pre-arrange things to be horizontal or I could do vertical as well. Now I've got another uh, set of options in here uh, that I'll show in a second, but let's talk a little bit about some other UV creation techniques. So I'm going to bring up a different object, and this time we're going to look at this tree. Now, a tree is something that is uh, notoriously difficult to texture map just because of the complexity of the shape. So if I had to do this manually, it would probably take me a couple of hours. What I want to do is actually do this in as automated way as possible. So I'm actually going to go in and create a simple planar map from the front of the object. And then I'm going to select this object and use a new tool called Auto Seams. In Auto Seams, does exactly what it sounds like. It will automatically generate your UV seams. So you can either use it in a cut mode where it'll pre-cut your shell's borders or a select mode where you can preview it before it actually cuts. I'm actually going to use the cut mode. I'm going to set my threshold to be fairly low initially, and then I'll bump that up. It's somewhat trial and error. Now it'll actually automatically go in and find all those border edges. I'm going to turn on my texture border so you can see that more clearly, but you can see it found a seam down the length of the trunk and a seam down each branch and if I were to go in now and actually just do a quick unfold of this object, just using my default unfold tool, you can see exactly what happened. It actually separated out all the branches and uh, all of the, the roots and the trunk. So now I'm actually going to use an automated method again, or the automated method, to do a second cut. I'm going to bump this up to, say, 0.4. And what I'm going to try to do now is find all of those cross cuts that would allow me to separate out the various parts and pieces. And indeed, it actually did. If you take a look, it found the cross cuts for the branches. And now all I have to do is take this object and once again, just lay it out really quickly or rather unfold it really quickly, and bam, automatically I get a pretty nice looking result. So now I might want to go in and refine this a little bit just using my cut tool. So I've got my interactive cut tool where if it didn't find the appropriate cross cuts, I can go in there and I can add them. It's just a, a quick click drag across my shell and that will slice these into various pieces. So I might actually want to go in and you can also use this with a double click where you can actually double click to define a path and that will cut it at that particular point. So pretty quickly I can go in here and I can start to break this into extra parts and pieces to kind of optimize my my cutting essentially so i'm going to take a couple more of these i'm not going to go crazy I actually overshot that one there but do something like that uh, and we'll just say that's good enough so now once again i'll just take my tree here and instead of unfolding it i'm going to go straight to the layout tool the options and for the layout tool 
Uh, I want to do a couple of things. Remember, I want to go in and do some pre-scaling so I can align some of these branches. You'll notice my branches are going all kinds of directions. I do some pre-scaling, or rather pre-rotation, and it'll automatically horizontally align those, and it does that in a really nice, efficient way. And then taking this a step further, I might want to actually go in and lay this out in different ways. For instance, I can lay it out into the left half, and that will basically squeeze it all into the 0 to 0.5 range. Or I could take this the other direction and I could say, I want to lay this out over three tiles. And that will give me three unique UV tiles and lay out all of my shells accordingly across those tiles. Now this makes more sense when you're dealing with lots of options. And this is a good thing to actually show because this tool scales really, really well. If I were to create an entire forest, which is actually kind of the optimal situation where I'm creating a bunch of trees and I want to lay these all out together. I'm basically going to reapply that with the same settings and you'll notice that now it's going to pack the UVs for all of those trees really, really nicely and really, really densely within the three tiles that I've defined. So again, it's very efficient and also quite a number of controls. You can control things like the padding between the shells in case you want to allow for texture bleed. You can control things like the pre-scaling. So if you want to bias pre-scaling towards the 3D proportions of your objects or towards the existing UV shell ratios, you can bias your layout towards those. A lot of other things as well. Now the last thing I want to show is a new option for shell shading. So if you go under image, we now have a menu for shell, uh, sorry, UV distortion. If you turn on UV distortion, what you can do is now you can see your UV distortion in a number of different ways. So you can see this, actually let me turn it on. Uh, you can see this across each UV shell individually or you can do it on a per object basis. And now you can actually see your UV distortion relative either to your objects, or you can actually see it relative to the individual shells, which is probably more likely what you're gonna want. So you can see I'm getting some stretching here at uh, the, the trunk, the nub there, and also inside this hole, so I might wanna fix those. Uh, but it's a much better way of visualizing this. And if I go in and start to make some changes to any one particular shell, you can see that now the distortion is only going to affect that shell. It's not going to uh, span across multiple objects and inadvertently kind of incorrectly highlight those uh, those extra pieces or extra shells. So as you can see, a number of new improvements in this release for UV editing. All right. Thank you for your time. Bye.